we need supercomputers to have three new characteristics that they don't have today. The first one is that they need to be data intensive. That means they need a lot of memory. You need soft, not only the architecture, but you need middleware. You need new kind of software to run the supercomputer to manage so much memory while it's trying to perform very fast computations. We, of course, need a very big supercomputer, about an exa, so what we call an exascale supercomputer. It's 10 to the 18 calculations per second, billion, billion calculations per second. But in addition to that, and that we believe there is a roadmap for that. By the end of this decade, there will be exascale supercomputers. But what we need is to enhance them with data. They've got data intensive, very large amounts of memory to be able to hold the whole brain model. We also need these uh, supercomputers to be multi-scale compatible. That means that some parts of the brain need to be simulated very high fidelity with every protein interacting, and another part maybe just a little ball running a very simple equation. We need to do that because there isn't even enough, even in the next decade or maybe two, there won't be enough memory to simulate a whole brain at, with every molecule. So we are pra have a pragmatic strategy, what we call multi-scale supercomputing, where as, f as much memory as we have, we'll be able to simulate the active parts at greater resolution. The third part of computing that is required is um, what we call interactive supercomputing. You see, when you get to exascale supercomputing, you're going to be generating petabytes of data per second. That would cost you millions of dollars to move off the machine, and it would take a, a team of scientists years to analyze. We can't afford that. We need to actually analyze, visualize, make decisions, reverse experiments, design new experiments in real time or close to real time, interactively, while the brain model is being simulated. So we are trying to push for these three new characteristics to be fundamental in the architecture of future supercomputers. We believe it will be beneficial to not just all of life science, for simulating the heart, the liver, the lungs, the kidneys, and so on, but even for earth science. Earth science, if we're going to do a very detailed simulation of the earth, it's also going to require very large supercomputers, data-intensive, multi-scale, interactive.